If you've studied vectors at all, especially from the point of view of physics, you'll probably have heard of operations like the dot product and the cross product, both very fundamental and very important operations one can do on three-dimensional vectors. The dot product can be used to calculate things like work, and a cross product often comes up in calculating things like torque and the magnetic force. It may surprise you, however, to learn that the dot product and cross product really came from not operations upon three-dimensional vectors, but quaternionic multiplication, the quaternions being a four-dimensional mathematical object. And in this video, I'd like to show you how the dot product and the cross product connects to the multiplication of quaternions. If you haven't heard of quaternions, I encourage you to check out my introductory video on the quaternions. I tried to keep it brief so you can get right into learning what they are and how to multiply them. And I'll remind you, that the way in which we multiply quaternions, let's say a, b, c, d as my first quaternion, and my second quaternion is e as e, f, g, h, those two quaternions are going to be multiplied in the following manner. The new first component is going to be given by this formula. Here's the new second component, the new third component, and the new fourth component. I'll also remind you that if I have some quaternion a, b, c, d, I can go back and forth between writing it like this and writing it like this, a plus bi plus cj plus dk. And I'll also remind you that one often breaks a quaternion into two parts, this a being called the scalar part. It's called a scalar, by the way, because quaternions of the form a000 operate just like scalars. They multiply it by two, they scale it up by two or three or whatever. So that first part is the scalar part. This triplet here, the BCD, or this three vector, is called the vector part. And again here, if I were to break it up like that, this is the scalar, and this is the three vector part. Now that distinction between a scalar part of a quaternion and its vector part was historically very useful. It was very useful to think of a quaternion as being composed of some section, a scalar, that acts like a number, it scales up or down, and a vector part, which had some sort of directionality to it. With that in mind, let me take this vector part of this first quaternion, and let me call it the vector x. And let me take the vector part of the second quaternion, and give it the name y. So you can see I could rewrite this first quaternion, a, b, c, d, as the scalar part a joined with the three vector x. And I could also write the second quaternion as some scalar e joined with a three vector called y. Now to introduce the dot product and the cross product, all we're really going to do is have a close look at this multiplication formula here. So let's look at the new scalar component that arises when I multiply a, b, c, d, by EFGH, which is going to be AE minus BF minus CG minus DH. Now what you'll notice here is that I have an AE here, which is the product of the two scalar components. So let me rewrite that here, AE. And then I have this triad of terms here. I have minus BF minus CG minus DH. Now notice the order in which that appears. I have B times F minus C times G minus D times H. So let me pull out a minus sign there. So it's going to be minus the quantity BF plus CG plus DH. Now remember X was that vector BCD and Y was that vector FGH. Now what happened was this quantity got singled out, this BF plus CG plus DH, and this got renamed the dot product between X and Y. So I'm going to rewrite this new scalar part as AE minus the dot product between X and Y. So this is where the dot product comes from, uh, isolating out this triad of terms here, the minus BF, minus CG, and minus DH and just yanking out that minus sign. Having dealt with that scalar part, 
let's now take care of the new vector part that results when I take ABCD and multiply by EFGH, or equivalently AX times EY. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to single out these three terms right here. Now, notice what these three terms have in common. They have an E, which is being multiplied by B, C, and D. And remember, B, C, D is precisely this vector X here, which means in the new vector part, I could summarize these three terms as E times the vector X. And another collection of three terms I'm going to single out are going to be this trio of terms here. Notice what's going on here. I have the A in all three being multiplied by F, G, and H. And remember, F, G, and H is that vector Y. So I could summarize that trio of terms as A times the vector Y. And then what I have left are these six terms here, one, two, three, four, five, and six. And let me pull each of those terms out. I'm going to write this as CH minus DG. That's going to be the first component of the new three vector. Then I have the second component here, which is DF minus BH. And finally, I have BG minus CF. BG minus CF. And if you want to take a wild guess as to what this new three vector was called, this was defined as the cross product between X and Y. So these six terms are going to be summarized by the following, X cross Y. If you've studied the cross product at all, you'll know that one of the key properties of, of the cross product is that it takes in two three-dimensional vectors. In this case, we inputted B, C, D, and then F, G, H, and we output C, H minus D, G, D, F minus B, H, and then B, G minus C, F. And you also know that the vector that gets outputted is orthogonal to both of the inputs. That is to say, if I take B, C, D, if I take that vector and I dot it with this vector, I should get zero, which means that those two vectors are orthogonal, or they're 90 de degrees with respect to one another. And likewise, if I take F, G, H, and I dot it with the cross product, this vector that just came out, I should also get zero, which again means it's orthogonal. So what the cross product is doing, and this is one of the neat observations about the cross product, is it inputs two vectors and it outputs a vector which is perpendicular to both of the inputs. I've rewritten the result that we've just got in slightly different notation. Again, I have two quaternions called W1, V1, and W2, V2. I've just renamed the new scalar parts as Ws and the new vectors as Vs, a V1 and a V2. So if I have these two quaternions here, the formula for multiplying the two using now vector analysis is going to be in the new scalar part, w1, w2, minus v1 dot v2. And the new vector part is going to be given by w1 times v2. This is a vector, remember? w2 times v1, again a vector, plus the vector given by v1 cross v2. So that's just the formula that we've just obtained. And what I'd like to do is show you a couple neat things that will connect quaternion multiplication to the more familiar operations of the dot product and cross product. What I'd like to do is look at a special case where the two scalar parts of your input quaternions are zero. That is to say, they have vector part only and no scalar part. So let's say I had some quaternion, which is given by zero, V1. As you can see, this is just a three vector loaded into a quaternion. And then I multiply this by zero, again, zero in the scalar part, times another vector, another three vector loaded into a quaternion called V2. And I'm going to multiply those two together. Now notice here, W1 and W2 are zero. So this first product is going to be zero. So I'm going to be left with minus V1 dot V2. That's going to be my new scalar part. 
And the new vector part is going to be quite simple, because again, w1 and w2 are both 0, so these first two terms vanish. And I'm left with the cross product between v1 and v2. So you can see here, if you had two, three vectors, what you could do, conceivably, is load those two into quaternions. If you do quaternion multiplication between those two, do that quaternion multiplication, the new scalar part that comes out is the negative of the dot product between v1 and v2, and the new vector part is v1 cross v2. So you get both of those key operations of vector analysis straight from quaternion multiplication. Now, I hope you remember that quaternion multiplication is not commutative. So what I'm going to do is instead of multiplying the two quaternions in that order, I'm going to flip the order. So I'm going to take 0, v2, and then multiply by 0, v1. And what do I get? Again, the w's are 0, and what I'm left with is the negative dot product between, now this time it's going to be v2 dot v1. But the dot product is commutative, which means the new scalar part is going to be equal to this scalar part. So the new scalar part is going to be negative v1 dot v2. Again, the dot product is commutative, so I could have easily written negative v2 dot v1. That would have been the same thing. Now let's have a look at the new vector part. Again, the w's go to 0. Now this time, notice that the cross product appears in the order v1 cross v2. And this time I have v2 cross v1. Now, the cross product is what's called anti-commutative. So I'm going to write that here first. v2 cross v1. However, this is equal to, just copying the scalar part, this v2 cross v1 is actually equal to minus v1 cross v2. That's what it means to be anti-commutative. When I flip the order, I can do that if I want to include a minus sign. The flipping of the order comes with a minus sign. Now what I'd like to do is I'd like to go back to this quaternion here, the zero vector v1, and I'm going to call this quaternion just v1 without a vector sign over it. And I'm going to redefine this quaternion as v2. So that means that this one here is equal to v2, and here I have v1. So I could say that this left-hand side is v1 times v2 in the quaternion multiplication sense. So let me rewrite that. v1 times v2 is equal to the negative dot product of the vectors v1 and v2. And then in the vector part, I have the vector v1 cross v2. And now I'm going to rewrite out this equation here. So I'm going to have v2 times v1 is equal to minus v1 dot v2 as the new scalar. And then the new vector is going to be given by minus v1 cross v2. Now what I'd like to do is take these two equations and add them together. Now on the left-hand side, I'm going to have v1 v2 plus v2 v1. And now I'm going to add both of these quaternions together on the right-hand sides. Now in the scalar parts, I'm going to add the scalar parts, and what I'm going to get is minus 2 times v1 dot v2. And notice when I add the vector parts together, they cancel and they give me the zero vector. Now I could very easily yank out that minus 2, so this is going to be equal to minus 2 times v1 dot v2 with the zero vector. And for ease of notation, I'm actually going to just call this minus 2 times v1 dot v2. I'm just going to drop that zero vector part there. So now if I solve for v1 dot v2, I have the v1 dot v2 is equal to minus 1 half v1 v2 plus v2 v1. So here you can see that I have the relation between the dot product of two vectors and quaternion multiplication. That is to say, 
at least in principle, if you wanted to compute the dot product between two vectors, let's say v1 and v2, one thing you could do is plop v1 into a quaternion, which was 0 v1, which I called just v1, and you could plop v2 into a quaternion, which was up here, which I just called v2, and you do the following computation. You take the quaternions v1 and v2, multiply them in that order, add that to v2 times v1, and then scale down by minus one half. We've seen what happens when you add the two equations together. Now let me try subtracting the two. So now on the left hand side I'm going to have v1 v2 minus v2 v1 is equal to. Now on the right hand side when I take this thing minus v1 dot v2 and I subtract away itself, I'm going to get zero for the new scalar part. And now what happens here? I have v1 cross v2 minus minus v1 cross v2. And that's going to be 2 times v1 cross v2. And just as before, I'm allowed to factor out a 2. And I'm also going to drop that 0 there. I'm just going to call this new thing v1 times v2. v1 cross v2, that is. And then if I solve for v1 cross v2, I have v1 cross v2 is equal to 1 half times v1 v2 minus v2 v1. So there's the, re the relation between the cross product between two vectors and quaternion multiplication. One neat thing that's going on here is that these quantities such as v1 v2 minus v2 v1 or more abstractly ab minus ba that is, I have the product between a, b, subtracted away the reverse order, b, a. These things are called commutators. So I could rewrite this quantity v1, v2, minus v1, v2, v1 in the following way. I could rewrite it as the commutator between v1 and v2. And that's often de uh, designated by these brackets here. Now keep the 1 half there. And this is still equal to the cross product, v1 cross v2. Alternatively, you could say that the commutator between the quaternions v1 and v2 is equal to 2 times the cross product v1 cross v2. To summarize, here are those two results that we've just derived, showing the relation between the dot product and quaternion multiplication, and also the relation between the cross product and quaternion multiplication. And I think that's all I wanted to cover in this video. Hopefully you've uh, enjoyed seeing this, this connection, a historical connection between our modern concepts of the dot product and the cross product to quaternion multiplication. The quaternion multiplication coming before the dot product and the cross product historically. And it's also interesting to note that all of this useful math, all of this useful three-dimensional math that we've got from the dot product and the cross product really comes from four-dimensional math. So that's just an interesting thought. So I thank you for watching the video. If you enjoyed this video or any of my other content, I encourage you to subscribe and stay tuned for more interesting videos. Thanks again for watching.